you know, you're one of those exceptional directors <coughs> who's got like these meaningful movies which people absolutely love and then they make huge profits. You're a person who's obviously very successful and yet humble. People admire you and then you look up to others as well and you're never shy of admitting that. How does it feel to be in your shoes and are the expectations too high sometimes? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, no, no, I consider myself extremely lucky, considering myself pretty blessed that uh, uh, I've been able to go out and make the film I want to make. Right. Uh, without being under pressure of the so-called typical commercial cinema. I've made what my heart says, varied subjects, be it talking about Gandhi or be it talking about education or religion and uh, on paper all of them have looked like unsafe projects. Right. Uh, but I always feel that the audience is extremely intelligent, extremely smart and we don't need to give them rehashed material. Right. So till now it's, uh, uh, for me it's very important that the film finds love with people. Mm -hmm. uh, commercial success is secondary. Right. Uh, but at the same time, I can't deny that now since you've seen that kind of uh, affection for the film and also commercial numbers, at some level that pressure does crop up in your head when you're coming close to the release that, okay, when you're making the film, you made it the way you wanted to make it, then you say, oh, now you want it to succeed. Right. In that sense also. Yeah. I can't deny it. I think the only time I had never had that pressure was when I was doing my first film. Yes. That time only thing mattered that, okay, you're here in the city to make a film and you made your first film and you're extremely happy with it. True. So you don't let it bother you? You can't actually because uh, uh, I don't think you can make a film thinking that, okay, I'm going to make a film which will make a lot of money. Yes. Unfortunately, this is not a... You unlike can't any predict other, that. You cannot. You, you, how can you judge what somebody sitting in California will like or somebody sitting in Patna will like. Mm. You, you cannot judge, you cannot attempt to make a film like that. So, okay, this person would like this, so let me put a little bit of this. Yeah. Then it's not an organic process of, you have to say, you are the audience too. And if this is a story which inspires you, if this is a story you love, mm. make it. So you have to make it for yourself. Right. Uh, uh, and then hope people can find some resonance with it and get attracted to it. So changing the spelling of a, the name of a film will not help and I believe you've got <laughs> Karan Johar and many others in the industry off that superstition of uh, numerology and various other things. I don't know that, that but uh, uh, yeah, that's something we had touched in Lagero Munna Bhai where uh, we had that character Khurana and, and he had added an extra K in front of his name. So we call it KK Khurana, uh -huh. Kaka Khurana or whatever is to call it. But I find it, I find it, if you ask me, if I may use the word, pretty stupid too. Uh, I don't think spellings can change uh, fortunes. Yes. Because it's, it's quite... Uh, at, so are we saying that... Also even when we will say our destiny is already written, if our destiny is already written, yeah. then why are we putting the effort? I think it should happen, then we should not worry. Then, then nobody's wrong in this world. Then if somebody's killing somebody that was in his destiny, then who is Correct. right, who is wrong? So, so it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And then how can you alter it? Yeah. If, 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 if by changing a spelling or by changing some numerological numbers, things can get altered, then, then it's very easy for everyone to. Correct. Yeah. I think you just have to work. You know, as I said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Yeah. yeah. Raja, you have such an honest to goodness quality about you and that's something that everybody loves and admires. But I believe in college you were up to some mischief that uh, the school vice principal, I mean the college vice principal had to call your father what was that episode about? It's oh, so God, how have you? Where have you got that? <laughs> Surely, I think you met somebody I know. So, yeah, this... Uh, my dad's been a big influence on my life and... Uh, you know, when you step out of school, there's a huge amount of freedom and suddenly in college you want to really enjoy that space. So, this was in college when I had... Uh, uh, I think it was in my first year. I finished 12th and it was in my first year. I was doing BCom. And our college used to be hardly 3-4 hours in the morning, 7 o'clock to 10.30. And uh, so this, I think we must have been either, no, no, maybe second year and this new batch which had come in first year and there was a new professor mm -hmm. who was teaching. So some of us went into a classroom, which was a year, yeah, it wasn't our class, we went and sat in the new class with these new students behaving like we are also new people. And we started playing around with the 
the professor also just didn't know. So we would get up and ask stupid questions and kind of try to be little heroes in that class. And uh, the vice principal was passing by and uh, he spotted me in that class. Uh -huh. he spotted all of us. So, and we realized it's trouble time. So we quietly got up and started walking out of the door. Right. And behaved as if we've not seen him. And amongst those four or five who walked out, he only remembered my name. <laughs> so he kept on calling me from behind. Hirani, Hirani. <laughs> and I, I thought, you know, I, I behaved as if I not heard it. And I quickly ran away from his view. So this must have been at like first class, 7.15 in the morning. So he went to the office, took out my dad's number and called him. Right. And he said, you have to come to the college. You have to throw off your son and this thing and that thing. And he said, what happened? He said, no, you have to come to the college. Right. And then somebody told me that your dad's been called. So I quickly went out. There was a PC outside the college. From there, right. I called my dad. Uh, 7.30. And I said, uh, he said, what happened? I said, no, I said, you don't have to come to college. I was damn worried you know, what will happen. So he said, but what happened? I said, no, something like this happened. And, you, know, you don't have to come. He said, no, no, I'm coming. And an hour later, he landed up in college and I, I thought he, that's going to be the end of me, he's going to really bombard me. He didn't say anything to me. He straight walked into the vice principal's room, he took me along and there he took off on the vice principal. He said, look, I work late, I sleep late, <laughs> why do you wake me up? Yes. You have a problem, sir? Throw him. <laughs> why are you supposed to wake him up? He's a grown up guy, you don't like him, throw him. You have no right to wake him up. And he bombarded him so much <laughs> that end of it he was saying, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I should. <laughs> so that's the way I've seen my dad all the time. I can completely empathize with that, you know, emotion of uh, not wanting to compromise on your morning sleep for anything. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, your movies, they're not just about, um, there are many experiences that obviously yeah. come from your life. Uh, but the core of most of your stories has a father-son relationship in one way or the other. Uh, so tell me, where does that stem from? Obviously, your father and your relationship with your father. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about him. See, actually, I didn't realize that till very recently. Somebody told me that uh, since I've been talking about Sanju, that it's a father-son story. Then somebody pointed out that every film has a father. I, I didn't think not of done it. it consciously, actually. Yes. But then when you analyze it, you say, how do you write your scripts? You write from who are we actually, we are some total of our experiences Yes. and certain experiences stay with you and when you are writing you get attracted to those experiences mm -hmm. uh, when you hear similar experiences. So I guess, uh, yeah, my dad had a huge influence on me all my life. I really looked up to him uh, for his brave acts and you know, he was an outspoken man and for him right thing, if it's the right thing, he will stand up for that right thing for even the you know smallest guy around him. So I guess I naturally tend to get attracted to those kind of things. So even when Sanju was narrating a story, when I was possibly the parts, when it came to Datsab and Sanju, I was attracted to those parts. Similarly, friends have been a big influence in my life. I've had some lovely friends. So even in this film, that part attracted me. So like Sanju's story, if you look at it, it's there's so many colors. So Possibly some other filmmaker would have taken the dark side of that story and yes. followed that path. That could. So every film can be told in different ways, how you interpret it. So I think my natural bend is to get attracted to things which have been influences in my life. So I think it comes very subconsciously. There's no effort to say, okay, okay no, 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 I'm going to make it a father-son. No, it yeah. happens subconsciously. And I believe you also pranked your son veer into some life lessons about drinking. You met who? Anju or somebody told you this. You've spoken to someone. These are I shall tell you later. How many sources baad mein reveal karenge. <laughs> yeah, this happened when he was he turned eighteen. Right. And he wanted to have this party at home. And uh, he said, Yeah, a great party. And then he says, you know, but all my friends drink and we have to have this party where we drink. I said, Look, I by law at eighteen you're not you're supposed to drink only at twenty one. Mm -hmm. At the most you can have a beer at 18 or some beer or wine, something like that. So I said, but yes, but then my friends won't come, you know, they all drink. I said, but you don't have to, they, they'll still come. He said, dad, you're. he got so troubled and so I said, no, no, I can't really allow you to do that, which is something which is not correct. And uh, so what I did, I said, okay, I can allow you only this much. 
you can have a beer or something your friends can have a beer he doesn't drink he, mm. i still believe i think it doesn't uh so i'm not sure but <laughs> so i think it doesn't so uh, what it did was i got hold of two actors and uh, we got them to costumes which are like cops and at around 11:30 or so they entered the house and they say you guys are drinking how are you drinking do you have a permit to drink do you have you can't drink here stop the music and everything and we had one guy who was shooting all this with camera and the kids he said okay i'm going to report to your father give me your father's <laughs> number give me all this thing and all the kids were completely spooked out and uh, they did that for about 20 minutes and at one point finally and the kids were trying samajh lo sir kuch kar lo kuch settle kar lo all that was happening in the house and at one point they said okay give us a drink and play some music and they played some music and the cops started dancing and then they realized ki oh god this was a whole one big prank out there yeah when you were at fdi you uh, wrote something about one of the filmmakers uh, whose works you were jean lu godard godard yeah and uh, which didn't go down very well what was that see uh, in then the films we end up seeing a lot of european cinema more than hollywood where these were the films in the archives we used to see right. most of that <coughs> and we were like the hindi film buffs we wanted to see gurudath we wanted to see hindi films we wanted to see manmohan desai rishikesh mukherjee and all that so but we were also supposed to see this so godas breathless of course i love that film but there was one film i think it was called weekend as far as i remember it was about there's a weekend in france and 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 all people are in in the cars and they are going out on a holiday and there's a traffic jam and the whole film is in that traffic jam for hmm. two hours so that was shown to us in the film appreciation class and i couldn't sit through the film so i got up and left in between a lot of us got up and then that film was again screened after a week okay. in the main theater so and it was told to us that you have to see this film so again i went again i couldn't couldn't sit through so i left again it was screened a third time that time I didn't even go so when we went for the papers uh this used to be the film appreciation class and uh, so there was only one question she says analyze mm-hmm. this film that right. is uh, so not uh, weekend or whatever it was called i forgot in the name now i said oh god that's why they were forcing <laughs> us now you can't say that we didn't see the film because it was screened thrice and this is what happened i fully panicked i said yeah i don't like this film and what do i do so i stepped out and and it was a very informal and we could step out have a chai outside think and then i said what do i do so then i finally went in i said let me be very honest about it right and i started the first sentence i said godard is rightfully called the called the bastard of cinema <laughs> <laughs> he somebody had quoted like that and right i said he keeps jumping from this angle to that angle and he keeps jump he break keeps breaking the grammar of cinema so i cannot like enjoy his film and Uh, uh so i went on and went and uh, from the films i had seen i had picked up grammar as the thing that he used to break that grammar that became kind of a cult thing then to do that right i said i don't like it and at this film so whatever little as i have kind of analyze that and i stepped out thinking that i am doomed uh but it the exams were not a worry that what grades you get but that little worry should if you get good grades you would get a little scholarship someone sure. used to come to us to so I went and abused <laughs> and I thought now this guy would flunk me but the professor was uh Mr. Shabriya was the professor and he was a bright mind and uh he said okay you have the right to abuse somebody it's not that okay. I'm not saying to praise the film and he gave me a B okay. which kind of let me sail through <laughs> But Raju one of the things that's also special about you is that you hold and nurture old relationships you know mm. and you you're not like a fair weather friend so just tell me like one memory associated with some of these Uh, associations that you've made in the film industry abhijat joshi just quick ones ha no no abhijat is a, he's a very unique man i don't think there's another like him which exists on this planet and he stands with you like a rock so i can't think of any writer writer's job is to write and go away and he is there with you earlier though he used to stay in us hmm. so he was never there on the shoots or during edit he used to come but since he shifted to india is there every day on the shoot he come and sit on the edit we will want to see till date even this film he is getting new ideas yes yes yesterday he said you know that dialogue we should have which he done with me in 3 years also he said that we should change i said abhijat the film is censored but if we can try and we can get it censored again so he is somebody who keeps 
driving and uh, he just talks about the film and now we finished this thing and today he's sitting somewhere and he says okay let me start writing one bhai now and <laughs> i said okay chill for two days he's a he's a he's a divine soul yeah he's a he's a fantastic man amir khan yeah see amir i got to know through two films and uh, his commitment his dedication to a film is of another level so even if i'm not doing a film with him like this film is not there i can still go and narrate the script to him and he will with all his heart talk about the film and this is working or this is not working so so there's another man whose commitment is cinema and you know how you make friends actually you make friends when you have common interests when common you grounds, common yeah. this thing something yeah. like even i tell avijad that if we have if we don't have a script to talk we won't know what to talk about yes so but uh, you know birds of a feather flock together right. so so it's it's a so from cinema you will talk about other things so with amir also it's like his life is cinema he's 24/7 either thinking cinema or now that he's so closely associated with the pani foundation and satyamev jayate and the that inspires him right so when we meet we will talk about cinema or that so but i think I'm, i consider myself blessed and fortunate that i have people like abhijat amir vinod I was going to ask you the third one, Vidhu Vinod Chopra. Ha. Uh-huh. You told me that he's the best producer you can have. He'll just give you the check and say, "Acha, now go direct the movie." He'll never come on the set. Yeah, yeah. Those were the days. Munna Bhai, in my first film, he did that. He said. Uh, so with Vinod also, a lot of people wonder what kind of equation I have. So with Vinod, we have a very, we fight many a times. Then there's huge amount of affection for the things he does for me. So. it's a it's a very up down relationship with him that we have sometimes you know battling over the with disagreements and we know we know disagreements are like he wants to have the final word <laughs> so uh, but at the same time he sees that if raju is disagreeing it's not about it's it's not an ego issue it's it's right. about the film if he's strongly feeling like that about something so he will very carefully listen but it's like main bol deta hu mera mind ye hai baaki teri marzi hai tere ko jo karna hai right so but i think it you know you have a very interesting life when you have people around you who can speak up their mind and who can so it's not somebody who's a fair weather friend or who's there just to please you these are all people who have their minds and we can sit laugh apart from work whenever we sit we can go back to our you know memories of our relationship from where they started and where they are now right. so it's good to have wonderful people I would like to include Baman in that. Baman is a yes, very dear friend. Yes, tell me about Baman. Also. And these are the friends I made after college. I'm right. Usually you make friends in college. In college. But these are friends you made when you started your life and they all have stayed. Baman is I think I've taken more holidays with Baman than I've done with my wife actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So So Raju such an impressive slate of films. Um obviously the Munna Bhai series, PK, mm. Three Idiots and now mm. Sanju. What can we expect next? Uh yeah, but now now uh I'm working on Munna Bhai now. Mhm. we have many more ideas and at the same time I'm looking out for ideas because every idea we start it takes some time to flow so i keep telling the world keep if you have ideas please give me those ideas and even if they are basic we can work on it and uh uh you know but a lot of people don't come to me thinking yaar ye to apna step likhega right so i keep telling people keep studios writers keep mujhe bhi do yaar kuch hum to na can make more films but otherwise i take 2 and 1/2 3 years to make a film Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your lovely film.